Hello everyone, today we're gonna be working on this 2001 for Mustang V6 3.8 We're gonna be replacing the radiator Let's just get started, as you can see we are removing the plastic cover Underneath you will see these brackets that hold the radiator So we're gonna go ahead and remove those As you can see, once you remove those, the radiator is basically completely loose so let's take this hose out and then we need to remove the water container that goes behind the radiator. Take that out only to bolt all that. Now is the time to remove the upper hose. So use any channel lock pliers that you have, put that hose back. This radiator was super dirty. Now it's time to remove the bottom hose. So take uh, whatever you have, if it is a clamp, if it is a, whatever is holding it, just remove it, push it back, and then be careful. A lot of dirty water will come out of it. These are transmission lines, so be careful with it. Uh, you, want, you have two, one on top, one at the bottom. Once you remove the one on top, as you can see, nothing came out of it, but the one at the bottom, some fluid will come out. Just keep that in mind how much fluid just uh, goes out because you will need to put that back after everything is done. As you can see, you can see the fluid coming out, that's transmission fluid. Now remove the plug that goes to the fan. While removing the cable, be careful. This cable is secured to the fan assembly by some kind of push-in plastic thing. Chances are they, they are gonna break. Pull that radiator out. It's as simple as that. You just lift it. Now take the bolt that holds the fan. The fan will slide. You have to slide that fan out. Once you slide the fan, you will be able to just remove it without any issue. So it's time to install the new fan. In this case, I have a new radiator and also I have a new fan. You just slide that fan in, lock it in place and then you will secure it with the two bolts that comes with it. Once the fan is in place, just make sure that the bolts align that way you won't have any problems when putting the bolts back. Right now, these O-rings that you see in here, those goes on the transmission line. Take these O-rings and put them in. See that I was using the driver. You can use anything that you have handy to help you put them in place. They gotta be straight, so you, you don't want them to be in the wrong position. Putting the radiator back is really simple, you just see that at the bottom it has these two guides, just make sure you put them in the right place. Now that you have the radiator in place, go ahead and secure it with the brackets that goes at the top of it. Now let's go ahead and install the transmission lines. So just go ahead and screw them by hand first and then you will be using a 13 millimeter wrench. Just be careful, you don't want this to be too loose, neither too tight, so just play with it. I would say that it's about probably 25 pounds, no more than that. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and install the hoses. First I did the upper hose and then I did the bottom one. Just make sure you put them all the way in and the clamp is secure. 
Let's go ahead right now and reconnect that fan and as you can see I was using zip ties to hold that cable because I was not able to get those original things that hold this cable but this will do it. Place that water container back and start filling up the radiator. Now it's just a process of putting everything back in. As you can see I'm putting that plastic cover back in place. And don't forget that little hose that goes from the radiator to the container. Uh, I didn't have any original clamps so I was using a zip tie to secure it in place. Put some water as well in the container and don't forget to measure your transmission fluid. You want to make sure you have the right amount since as you remember when we removed the radiator some fluid came out the transmission lines that comes to the radiator. So just make sure you have the right level of transmission fluid you don't want to get any trouble with that. At this point everything is done, just make sure you have the right amount of fluid. Now would be a good idea that you run the car for a short amount of time, double check everything, make sure everything is fine. After running the car, go ahead and stop it and check levels again because sometimes if you have air in the system, this will be the time to find out. So if you need more fluid, just go ahead and pull some a little bit more and you will be good to go. Thank you for watching.